Right. One, two, three. Hi, welcome to Ghostman Radio Station. And um, today is my another guest who come back for more talking to me. Poor man, what has he done to deserve that? His name is Kerry Smith, and he's talking about his new book, Vengeance Can Be Deadly, which sounds interesting. And now he's going to tell me all about it. Not quite all about it, because he wants the officer to go out and read it. And uh, hopefully he'll do us a little abstract as well. And a, a little backstory. Uh, one of the main characters that's beloved by most of the readers uh, gets uh, murdered in the very first chapter. You're actually in the first on the first page, and, and upset some of my readers um, because uh, she was a character they liked and uh, wanted to see more of an involvement in, in the stories with her and. Uh, and uh, her romance with uh, Warren Steelgrave. But she gets murdered in the first, very first paragraph of the very first page. And it, because he had been with her that week, on a, uh, he gets tagged as uh, the primary suspect in this, uh, in this murder. And it takes place in Italy, uh, where he has a home and he lives six months a year. So he, uh, he, he, he's upset. He has to uh, clear his name and he wants to find out who, who has done this murder. So it, the tale begins and, uh, and using common sense uh, it becomes a, quite a mystery. It uh, did win uh, a national award in America uh, for mysteries. And I'm kind of proud of, of that fact. So it uh, involves quite a few. That, like I said, it's the fifth in the series, and, and the books progress through uh, his his life as a, as a writer who gets dragged into these uh, terrible situations. He has to figure out how to get out of. So I remember you saying last time that you got got a lot of uh, your book, obviously, obviously because you live in Italy. You've got lots of Italian sort of influences of the the scenery and the the feel of the place because it, Italy's quite a laid back country and quite a fiery country all in the same boat. Yes, well, I, I do live uh, six months a year here in Italy, and so it uh, quite naturally uh, the stories uh, take place in northern Italy and. Uh, through Florence and uh, and uh, end up in places like uh, America, also where I live six months of the year. So uh, in his in his uh, endeavors to un- undo uh, some of these sagas, he he ends up traveling different places in the world. Uh, this book it's mostly uh, about fifty percent America and about fifty percent here in Italy. And um, I like blending the, the two cultures. My readers do too. They, they uh, all, the, all the restaurants, uh, all the places are factual. And, uh, and the, I hear from readers that they, they feel like they're in it, Lee. And, and, and when they come to visit, I have a friend come to, visit, come to visit. And when they walk in the house, they feel like, they say, you know, I feel like I just walked into one of your books. Uh, because a lot of the scenes happen on the terrace of the house that I live in. So, um, so yeah, it, it incorporates an awful lot of, um, of uh, Italy uh, throughout the, this last book that's posted, that is going to be published, I hope, this month. It spends a lot of time in London, in Belfast. So, you know, that'll be, that'll be a little different. In itself, it goes from from Italy to America to uh, to to London area, uh, oh, then into France, Monaco, Nice, and up through Italy, and ends up uh, getting solved. The murders and everything gets solved in uh, in Castle Monte, Italy. Yeah, I always find it fascinating that we use Americans and English. 
people speak the same language, but we don't speak the same language. If oh no, no. I, I, I have to tell <laughs> I have to tell my friends, uh, in particular when they come, say, man, now you might think they're under that, that they understand English and they're speaking English, but they will not understand your American English at all. And uh, a true story, friends are here, and I, I, I gave them that uh, little bit of, of thing, you know. And so we go to a restaurant in the town. It's a very, very famous air, a restaurant for the area. And, and the, the owner has owned it for 50 years, and he's from South Africa. And he was raised in, in, uh, in uh, England. And, and I graduated from Oxford. And so all the waiters over, they speak very proper English. And so we're sitting at the table and I just explained this to my friend. And so our waiter come up and he says, sir, uh, what would you like? And I ordered and he looks at my friend. He said, what, what would you like, sir? And he goes, uh, the rack of lamb. And the waiter just looks at him, looks at me and then looks at him again and he says I'm sorry sir what would you like and he says a rack of I'd like the rack of lamb and he goes he looks at me and I point to the menu and he goes sir it's lamb a rack of lamb <laughs> and didn't understand, you know he couldn't understand American English at all although you know his British English was very very good so <laughs> so yeah it's uh, America's a strange country as far as languages because it's uh, it's uh, everybody learns English different there it's uh, uh, when my daughter was in uh, second grade, third grade. Well, actually, in kindergarten, there was eighty-seven different languages spoke in her in her uh, in her kindergarten class. Wow! So, <laughs> so, 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 you know, pronunciation is nothing for Americans. Every other language in the world, pronunciation is everything. For Americans, it's. An American will pronounce a, a word differently every time he says it. So, yeah, yeah. I just, I just, I, I just think that you would have to include that sort of like in a in your book as a joke, so that if that like, say your character meets an English person, and they like um, go go on me, mate, you know that proper that's pro a great, proper essence. That's there. a great, yeah, yeah, that's a great <laughs> idea because in the book, every one of the books are always at the tray ray. Uh, ends up there for dinner. It's Trey Ray and Casablanca, and so uh, and so. Uh, that's a great idea. In fact, the one I'm writing, I think I'm going to steal that idea and now incorporate it in the in that book. I think it's worth it because I think because because so many people go, oh yes. So you want to say something like the um, the on the menu is a thing called spotted spotted dick. It's a it's a it's a sponge with raisins yeah. in. But you can just imagine American going, "What the hell is this?" Yeah, no, or or, or uh, a diary for calendar, you yeah. know, you know. Yeah. Uh, let me check my diary. You know, an American will look at you like, "What? <laughs> Are you recording this meeting? What do you mean you're going to check your diary here? Rubbish and a bit of garbage." And no, <laughs> it, uh, it it's uh, it's 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 different. And then, like I say, if you take how badly. Uh, Americans uh, pronunciate words and that, uh, you know, if it's close, we understand, but most other languages, you know, if it's the pronunciations off, hey, yeah, we got a clue what you just said. So. Yeah, I just think it's important Well, I try to include a form of humour in everything I write as a little, little dig at something and hopefully somebody will get it. Because I think the best horrors I've ever seen have always had an element of comedy in them whether it's intentional mm. or unintentional, because then it's a sort of like, ah, oh, and then it's like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. you got to be careful, because you might miss it. They might not understand in the book. You know, if you put it in a book, they might not understand the joke, because they didn't understand uh, the syntax of the sentence you used, you know. So, yeah, so, no, it's, uh, languages, uh, languages are funny. Now, uh, could you possibly do an extract from your new book for us, please? Sure. Why don't I? Uh, why don't I read? Maybe I'll start with the first chapter. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. That's up to you. I mean, you're the author. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just <laughs> we'll just start with the first chapter, and uh, and uh, either they'll hear it and, and say, "Well, 
and get drug into the story or or they won't, right? Yeah, it's not good. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> it was a warm April day and Maria Satania decided to have lunch out on her balcony overlooking the city of Florence. Her apartment was on the third floor of her small apartment building with a 180 degree commanding view of the city. She prepared a small plate of cheese and poured herself a glass of white wine. She walked out onto the balcony and was enjoying the view of the Ponte Vecchio crossing the Arnold when her doorbell rang. She sat down her lunch on the small table, walked back in through the kitchen and to the front door. Maria buzzed whoever into the building. Why were deliveries always at lunch, she thought. When she opened the door, all she saw was the barrel of the gun. Frightened, she stepped back into the apartment and was shot between the eyes. Shutting the door behind themselves, the killer walked over to the body. After making sure she was dead, the killer paused at the door, listening for any sound that might indicate someone heard the shot. A silencer only suppresses the sound of a gunshot. Not hearing anything, the killer went out through the front door, closing it behind him, and headed down the stairs to the street to make a getaway. I am Warren Steelgrave, a writer, and have spent the last week in Florence with my publisher going over my next book. I was on the autostrada driving. Autostrada driving north to my home in a small village, Muyayo, when I saw the exit for Luca. I decided to take a detour. It was not much out of the way. I would have, I would surprise Katharina and stop by her art gallery. Katharina and I met two years ago. She was an art student working as a waitress and had just started this gallery. I was in a difficult situation with some terrorists that she helped with. Katharina is young, vivacious, and a friend. Walking into the gallery, I found her hanging a new painting. It appeared she was rearranging things, getting ready for a new exhibit. She looked up as I entered. With excitement in her voice and a broad smile, she said, Warren Steelgrave, what a great surprise. Come, hold this painting so I can tell if it's positioned right before I mount it. Holding the painting in place while she stepped back for a look, I asked, getting ready for a new exhibit? Yes, this artist, Raymond Thrill, is very new on the scene, and the exhibit opens this weekend. Can you come? Are you staying in Luca? No, sorry, I have another commitment. I was on my way home from Florence and thought I would just stop by to see if you were free for a coffee. Let's hang this painting and then we can have a coffee across the, the piazza. We walked over to a small cafe across the piazza from her gallery. We sat under the shade of a large green awning on the side of the cafe. I was watching the people walking by and through the piazza when Katharina asked, Warren, were you staying with Maria? I was, but didn't think it was any of her business. I had been friends with Maria for over six years. The relationship was getting serious. Then we had a kind of falling out. During this time, Katharina and I spent a month in Paris together. Katharina became kind of possessive after, so I distanced myself a little from her. I haven't talked with Katharina for about a month. I didn't want to tell her the truth, nor did I want to lie. So I become evasive. I was in Florence meeting with my publisher. That was true, if not all the truth. How have you been, Katharina? I've been good, very busy. And you? I've been very busy with those short stories I started while we were in Paris. She sat quietly, then asked, Warren, are you seeing anyone? Katharina, I've told you, I'm way too old for you. You need to find someone closer to your age, get married, and start a family. She looked away and changed the subject. We sat and talked for about 45 minutes. Then I looked at my watch. It was already 1030. I have to go. I will call you a couple of weeks, and now we can do something together if you like. We got up, and I walked her back to the gallery and then left for home. 
I was driving for about an hour when I noticed I needed fuel. I pulled into an auto grill and filled up and continued home. When I got to Muyayo, where I live, the Cabaminere was parked on the street across from my house. In 10 years that I have lived here six months a year, I have never seen them in the village. This is serious. I parked in my driveway and as I got out of the car, two officers were already crossing the street to talk to me. Senor Stilgrave, may we have a moment? I am Brigadier Maria and this is Abendato Andre. Certainly let me grab my overnight bag. Please come in and have a coffee. Brigadier Maria was about six foot, maybe mid forties, just turning gray at the temples and very impressive in his uniform. Abendato Andre was younger, maybe 28 in uniform. They followed me up the steps into the house and waited patiently while I made three espressos. We sat at the kitchen table waiting for the coffee. Then they started in. Mr. Senor Steelgrave, may I ask where you are returning from? I'm returning from Florence. I spent the last week there on business. What type of business? I'm a writer and I was meeting all week with my publisher. I had no clue what this was about. I was keeping my answers as short as possible and, and chose my words very carefully. In Italy, they don't have to have evidence to arrest you. They believe you are guilty. That's all it takes. It's up to you to prove otherwise. The Cabin Minardi asks, doesn't pay you a visit unless it is very serious. I was becoming nervous. What time do you have? What time did you leave Florence today? I left close to eight this morning. What took so long to arrive here? Did you stop along the way? Yes, I visited a friend in Luca. Their name place and the time you arrived and left. Caterina Ricci, I arrived close to 9.30 at her gallery. We visited a while, had a coffee and I left. And I left close to 10.30. Then straight here. You didn't go back to Florence? I came straight here and not back to Florence. Where did you stay while in Florence? With a friend. What is this about? With Maria Satania? Yes. This is, what's this all about? Maria Satania was found murdered a couple hours ago. I almost fell out of my chair. No wonder I'm being grilled. I was probably the last person to see her alive. I'm a prime suspect. In their timeline, I could have had enough time to, to drive back to Florence, killed Maria, and still arrived here when I did. Unless she was murdered before eight, Katharina is my alibi. Then it hit me. If she was murdered around noon, leaving Luca at 1030 would have given me time to go back, kill her, and still get here when I did. My mind was spinning. Senior Stilgrave, we will need the contact information on Katharina Ricci and your passport. Then I remembered stopping for gas. I stopped for gas at about 1130. I couldn't have gone back to Florence and back to the gas station to have bought gas when I did. I stood and started searching my pockets for the gas receipt. Damn it, I'm sure I must have thrown it away at the gas station. Then it came to me. I used my credit card. The charge would be on my statement. Here is my passport. If you would follow me to my small office, I will get you all Katharina's information. I just remembered I did also stop for fuel. Let me get a printout from the bank of, of charges. It should show as a pending charge. They agreed, and we stood and went into my small office next to the kitchen. I sat at the desk and printed out Katharina's contact information. I got online and printed out all the pending charges. There were only two. One was for gas. I handed it to Mattia. He studied it carefully with Andre looking over his shoulder and then looked up and said, we will need you to come down to the station in the morning and give a full written statement. What time? We will expect you around 11. I nodded. I understood. And boy, did I understand. 
that Cavamignani, I figure, was grilling Katharina at this very moment and checking for any inconsistencies with what I have told them. My real in interrogation will be tomorrow if they find any. Thank God for credit cards. Chapter one. Cool. I can, yeah, I can see where it, it's clever because you're thinking, ah, oh, and it draws you. Yeah, I like that. Okay. good. And, uh, as I say, I, I, <laughs> thank you for doing that. I mean, it's always nice when people um, do that. Yeah, you know, yeah. The uh, chapter from their book, because then people can get to feel the book. As I said before, I think it. I, I think a book. We all. It's a bit like an art, a painting. We look at a painting and we go. Well, some people go, ooh. Don't see what they see, and someone will look and go, "Oh, I see a beautiful woman standing on the yeah. by the stars." <laughs> and go, "Are you sure you see that?" <laughs> well, that's that's what makes art art, right? Yeah. I mean, we're all individuals, and so yeah, it's. Uh, but sometimes it know. books like that because it, it's you might read a book and the, the author's like you wrote it one way, and I might interpret it and go, "Oh yeah, he went that way, did he?" And you go, no, I think you to go this way. But sometimes we, the reader, will interpret it slightly different from the author. Oh, all the time. No, absolutely all the time. Uh, I, the last book that you and I discussed, uh, short stories and poems, uh, as the author and the poems that I had put in the back of that book, uh, were poems I had written over a period of time. They're very short. And uh, for me, they were, <laughs> the poems were all about um, somebody significant in your life, obviously. Uh, a woman uh, could be interpreted as a, a, a close relationship with a parent. You know what I mean? But it was all about being supportive and whatever. And most people read those poems and they said, oh, we didn't realize you were so close to God and so religious. <laughs> and so I went, huh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, and then, I mean, I guess if you, you could read them that way, you know. I, I, when, they, when they were mentioned that to me, I, you know, and I said, really? And a good friend of mine said, yeah, this poem, look at it. I mean, I didn't realize you were that close to God. And I says, or to a woman. And he looked at it and he goes, oh. <laughs> I didn't see it that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're right, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I just thought, I just thought we do do that, don't we? It's like with films, it's different because in a film, you know roughly what you're going to get, and you're going to if it's over three hours, most people don't watch over a three hour film now. I mean, you don't get the, the, the films of today are roughly about two hours thirty, two hours forty. Anything over three hours, most people aren't going to bother turning up to. That's true, and 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 for me, when when I, I read a lot, um, I want it. I, I I want it left to me. I I I don't want the author to be so detailed on how I'm supposed to see the scene and what I'm supposed to think is happening and what I'm thinking. The pragmatist is is thinking. You know, I don't want to be told that. I mean, I should be able to, it should be a lift interpretation. I should be able to read into that, that I want for that character, you know. And uh, and so I try to write that way too, you know, that. Uh, you know, I bet you be... have unintentionally, or probably intentionally, put char base characters on people that you know in your book. Like your friends or yourself, oh, well, so, yeah, not well, fully, no, no, no. not fully, but <laughs> no, it's an no, a Absolutely. After the first book, I realized why authors use a different name to, to write because you catch a lot of guff for that stuff. And and Hemingway said it best. He says you can only write from your experience. If you haven't experienced it, you can't write. So yeah, almost all my characters are based through people I've met throughout my life. And the most important characters are the ones closest to my life. Although, it's not them. You know, it might be part of this person and part of this person. This person's 
outgoing personality and this other person's uh, deep feeling or, or inquisitive mind. You know what I mean? Co combined together. So yeah, I get a lot of that. You know, I know who I know who this person is in this chapter, and I look at him and say, I don't think so. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, and no, so, and I'm in my mind, I'm thinking, no, it's not them. You know, it really isn't. And uh, and uh, but they think it is. And they and people that know you try to figure that out. Try to figure out who you who you, who your characters are. Have you ever decided to write another Kyle Starler book from the mm. norm the norm that you would normally write? Say, would you write a horror or a science fiction or anything in that mind? I know it's not normally your gender, but would you sort of say, I'd do like an experimental book just to see how it yeah, works? Yeah, well, the short stories were kind of that, although they ended up being pretty much uh, a thing by the time I'm halfway through the book, I, I, I realized that there was, through each of the stories, there was, uh, although they're entirely different in uh, range from a young man going to war and losing his love of his life to a uh, father spending the last moments with his son. Um, but I, I go back to I, now. For me, it's uh, I have to write what I feel. I have to enjoy what I write for myself. And so uh, it would be very hard for me to. I don't read a lot of fiction, so it would be. I mean, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of horror books. I don't read those kinds of mysteries, so it'd be hard for me to write about them. Uh, the 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 compliments I get about my characters is because. There's there's part of like I said friends there's part of people I've known there's part of my life experience that build that character and build that scene and so it would be very hard for me to you know you've lived as long as I've lived you you yeah you can write about love and you can write about death and you can write about uh, things because you've uh, you've lived those things in one form or another. A step outside it would be very difficult for me to just say I'm gonna I'm gonna write a space odyssey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just because I, I, I like to sort of, I like, fiction history, history. I like to experiment something. with my books sometimes. I've written a sci fi and I've written horror. I've even written a book about time travel. <laughs> but we um that the fact that because we travel time zones that technically we time travel all the time. You know, no, it's yeah, not it's a form, it's not a real form of time travel but Technically, yeah. you're in the, you're in the, I'm in the, the future. You're in the past. That kind of thing, you know. The hour yeah. differences and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, no, and 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 uh, yeah, I, I, my hats off to people that can do that. You know, it really is because I couldn't do it. It has to be a little closer to to my life experience and so. It'd be hard for me to visualize a uh, fantasy going through space and landing on a planet well, of monsters or something. It would be very difficult. Well, Gary, please tell people where people can find your book again, just in case they didn't listen last time. But I wish you did listen last time because you would know where to get the book. Yeah, it's on Amazon and um, most major stores, but. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, Amazon plays games around the books. Uh, the easiest way is to go to Gary Smith, Gary at Gary Smith uh, You've been to my website and there, all my books are there with direct links to stores. There's also some free uh, downloads of uh, short stories and uh, posted uh, interviews like this one and, and stuff up there for people who might want to look more information about me. Uh, it's all there. Very interesting website, people. Very informative, very worth the while. And I highly recommend you go and buy Gary's books, not because he's my guest, because I like, I've read little bits of Asterix, obviously, for the moment, until I got the money to fold the whole book. <laughs> it's like life itself. But, um, and I got, I could get the gist of it. I like the style of it. And that's the main thing. If I like a book, I like a book. I'm, I'm not one of these people that are going to say, "Oh, I like it because I didn't." Just because you're the guest, if I don't like it, I'm going to say, "I don't like your book." But thanks for being the guest. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with you. I, and uh, it's funny. I, uh, 
one of my books, I entered into a contest and paid extra money because you'd get a critique. And they, they, they criticized the book, which I don't mind. You know, if they, if they were to criticize the story or that it didn't flow well or that the character development was poor, but the criticisms were, well, he had his photo on the back of the book and it should have been on the inside cover. Uh, <laughs> wow. No, we didn't, didn't like the color or the cover of the book. Um, stuff like that. And I thought, hey, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> You know, I mean, any criticism about the, about book, the really? writing, I, I would have, I would have, you know, I, I encourage good or bad, you yeah. know, and uh, but the, <laughs> but if that's the only criticism you have, and my cover was on the back, and that's old school; it should be on the inside front cover. It's like really, and I paid for this. I paid for this critique, huh? <laughs> so yeah, I always ask if I do a book. If I took a book review, I always do it for free. I don't do nothing. For money, it's not worth it. And it I mean, I do my oh, books. Yeah, but, you know, if, if some of these places, you know, they uh, this this was a uh, an organization of authors, and so you know, it was it's a you know, you throw your hat in the ring, uh, which I do from time to time, and I'm glad I did. Uh, I got the New York Big Book Award uh, in the 22nd year and uh, national award, and uh, and so you do that from time to time, and, and you don't mind the criticism. And I think their entry fee is like $75 or something like that. And uh, and don't mind. But criticize the writing if you're going to criticize the book. You know what I mean? Uh, don't, don't criticize the size of the book or the color of the thing or or that it's a hard cover, it should have been soft cover, or something like that, you know. It's like, Gary, do what I do, <laughs> make him a victim in your next book. Uh, it's, it's, I'm going through the galleries now, so I'm hoping it's going to be published before uh, the end of August. Uh, and presently I'm uh, working on a seventh book in uh, in the Warren Silgrave series, so... Oh, cool. There's, there's well, one coming out this my month friend. and another one coming out in about eight months. So. You've got to get a better view of your, your brick wall. It, at, the, at the back, you've got like a your grey cum brown brick wall in the background. Yeah, well, it, what this is, is my office actually, and uh, in Italy, and uh, it was once the barn to the house that I've turned oh. into, this one into a the grand room, which has a has a large table behind me and, and chairs, and uh, and then next to it is the wine cellar. And the house was built around 1550, so oh, well, it's a bit old, we then. took it back to the original. We took it back to the original stone walls. And, ah, uh, I see. That's why. Ah, uh, I get it now. I didn't. I wondered why it was there. Uh, it looks like it. You know. Um, <laughs> this is sad now. Uh, the midness of seven when they go into the buildings in the Mexican and, and they shoot them down like it, it, it looks a little bit like one of those buildings yeah yeah typical yeah, yeah. spaghetti western no, this, type is, thing. this is original and uh, and my cousin who uh, who did the remodel he died just before it was done uh, oh, said he seen paperwork uh, is back to he seen paperwork dated in 1585 but he thought it was older and then i found uh, uh some wood in the found original foundation so i had it carbon dated and they said between 1500 and, and 1600 they can only carbon date to within 100 years and so i'm figuring yeah he was right it's probably around 1550. cool i was sad about the old um that but Thank you for being a guest, Gary. I, I always like talking to you. I hope you like talking to me. Well, you must have done, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I must have done something <laughs> right for you to turn up twice. Well, thank you. Thanks for inviting me back. Yeah, and if you ever need a, a base and a character that lives in London, just think of me. I will. <laughs> you, and be careful. Be careful now. You might find yourself in a book and murdered someplace. Well, I don't mind. <laughs> I, I don't mind what, what, if I get murdered, I, I can say, I was murdered in Gary's book. See, that was me. <laughs> All right. You take care now. Thank you very much. Bye. Ciao.